Welcome to ECE 320, Electronics 1, lecture number 12. Use a good transistor as a switch. So here's the idea. A lot of devices like microcontrollers, be it Arduinos, PIC processors, uh, function generators, are fairly wimpy. They can output voltages, uh, 0 to 5 volts. The function generators we have in lab can do plus minus 10 volts at only 20 milliamps. That's not enough to drive many devices. You can buy function generators that can do more, but they're expensive. Uh, if I want to have those devices drive a load, such as an LED, speaker, or a motor, I need a buffer. The transistor is a buffer that operates between the two. Here's an example. This is a PIC microcontroller that we use in embedded systems. It is very similar to an Arduino or any other device. If I try to have it drive a DC motor like this, here's a DC motor. If I connect it up directly, what happens is pretty much nothing. So here the motor's connected, and nothing's happening. If I have it try to drive a speaker, I can get it to drive a speaker. I connect it through a 100 ohm resistor. There it is. And you can hear a slight noise. It's not very loud. I need to amplify it. That's what a transistor does. Uh, for example, on this board, here's the transistor that we're going to talk about in this class. And we'll look at how to drive a device with higher power. What a transistor does, it acts as a switch. So if I connect a speaker to the microprocessor through a transistor, I've got the speaker turning on and off. And here you can see quite a bit more uh, motion in the speaker. I'm either getting 0 volts or 5 volts across the speaker. If I apply those voltages at a higher frequency, I now have a loud, annoying speaker. Do the same thing with an LED. I now have an extremely bright LED turning on and off. Uh, with that, I can make a strobe light. Use the transistor as a buffer between a motor and a microprocessor. I can now have a wimpy processor turning off a sizable motor. So that's kind of what a transistor does as a switch. It acts as a buffer between something wimpy like a microprocessor or a function generator to turn a device on or off. So this looks just looks at how do you do that. Now transistors operate on a load line. For example, if I have this circuit going collector to emitter, I've got 10 volts, 100 ohms in the transistor. If the transistor is turned off, the current flow is zero and I have 10 volts across the transistor. If I short collector to emitter, I've got zero volts collector to emitter and 100 milliamps flowing. The load line, current versus voltage, follows the straight line. The base current determines where you are on the load line. If the base current is zero, I'm off. As I increase the base current, I go through the active region. Then if IB is greater than IC, I try to operate up here, I'll saturate. I'll clip right here at about 0.2 volts. What I want to do as a switch is operate either off or saturated. Off is easy. Just make VN less than 0.7 and there's no current through the diode and there's no current flow, the transistor's off. Saturated is where the design comes, it gets a little bit trickier. I need to pick this base resistor right here. Pick it so that beta IB is more than IC. Pick it so that the current I'm commanding is more than I can get. Then the uh, load limits the current and the transistor saturates. So that's the idea behind designing a transistor switch. Just pick the base resistor so that beta IB is more than you need. It's more than IC. Uh, the first step is pick the transistor you want to use. We've got two transistors in lab. You've got the 3904s that can do up to 200 milliamps, or the TIP transistors that can do up to 2 amps continuous, 4 amps peak. Um, if I want to drive something that needs less than 200 milliamps, I can use the 3904. So there's actually kind of two circuits. I can use an NPN or PNP. We'll be using NPNs. The first trick is set up the device so if I connect between power and ground, it turns on. For example, if I want to drive an LED at 200 milliamps, pick RC so that if I connect it straight to ground, I'll get 200 milliamps flowing. I'll then break the path to ground with the transistor. If I put the transistor on the ground side, I use an NPN. If I put the transistor on the high side, I use a PNP. Either one works. 
On an NPN, if the input is 5 volts, I get current flow in the base, the transistor saturates, and the diode turns on. On the PNP, if the input is 0 volts, I get current flow in the base, the transistor turns on, and I get current flow. So these are kind of opposites. Here, 5 volts is on. Here, 0 volts is on. But you could use either one. We'll be using NPNs. To design the circuit, this kind of follows uh, three steps. First, pick RC to set the current to 100 milliamps. Uh, planning ahead, when the transistor saturates, this will be about 0.2 volts VCE. The LED has a 1.9 volt drop. That comes from the data sheets. That leaves uh, 2.9 volts across the resistor. 2.9 volts at 100 milliamps is 29 ohms, so set RC equal to 29 ohms. To find RB, calculate the current that you need. I want to make sure that beta IB is more than IC. If IC is 100 milliamps, IB has to be at least 1 milliamp. So pick something bigger than 1, less than 25, because the pick can only do 25 milliamps. Uh, here I pick 2. It's kind of arbitrary. Um, you know, don't pick 1.01, something to give you a little bit of safety margin. If that's 2 milliamps, then I need a 2150 ohm resistor, give or take. Let's make that 2K. Uh, do that, and it should work. To check, I can check in Circuit Lab or Build It in Lab. In Circuit Lab, I'll build this circuit, make the input 0 volts, it turns off, and VC is equal to 5 volts. Make the one 5 volts, and what I'll get is the current is 93.18 milliamps. It's supposed to be 100, that's pretty close. The way you check to see if it's saturated is check VCE. If this is 0.2 volts, ballpark, it's saturated. Um, here, VCE is 0.167 volts, so that's that's what we want. I want it to be close to zero. Close to zero means, yep, it is working. I did saturate the transistor. This is a case what happens if you do it wrong. If I make the base resistor too large, there's not enough base current, and the transistor doesn't saturate. That shows up right here on VC. VC is 1.18 volts. That large voltage tells you I'm not saturated. I need more base current. So R1 is too big. And to illustrate that, here's a hardware circuit. Right here's the transistor. It's being fed from the pick board. Here's the base. There's the collector. There's the emitter. What's being displayed is VCE. Now when the diode is the transistors turned on, current flows. And the voltage should be about 0.2 volts. Here I'm actually getting 0 0.00 volts. Go a little bit smaller scale. It's actually about 3.4 millivolts. That's not a problem. The 200 millivolts is kind of a ballpark. I want it to be zero. It won't be exactly zero. In this case, this is actually a really good transistor. I'm getting about 0 0.0 or 30 millivolts when it turns on. When it turns off, there's no current flow. You can see that with the LED turning off. When there's no current flow, the transistor dumps the voltage. In this case, it's 2.9 volts. Second example, exactly the same circuit, but rather than having an LED, I've got this little fan over here. So that's a little 5 volt fan. When the transistor's turned off, I have 8 volts across, or 5 volts across it. When the transistor's turned on, yeah, there it's off. Here's turned on. I've got 4.8 millivolts across it. And Let's get it to turn off again. Here it's off. I've got 4.87 volts, basically the 5 volt supply. So that's an example of a transistor, and the way you check it is check VCE. If that's 0.2 volts, ballpark, you did it right. Transistor saturated. Now there's two types of transistors up in lab. There's the 3904 transistors. That's just a single silicon transistor. There's also the TIP transistors. Those are actually Darlington pairs. A Darlington pair is actually consisting or made up of two transistors. The problem you run into is it's hard to get both high gain and high current capability with a single transistor. So what a Darlington pair does is it uses two transistors. The first one has a high gain, say 10. The second one has a lower gain, gain of only say 10, but has a higher current capability. The net result is you get a high gain, in this case 1,000, and high current capability. Uh, TIP-112 can do up to 4 amps instantaneous. 
the way it works is base to emitter, I now see one, two diodes, so this now has VBE of 1.4 volts. The current gain is if the base to emitter has one microamp, that gets amplified by beta, beta 1, that gets amplified by beta 2, so the current gain is beta 1 times beta 2, um, basically beta squared. Essentially, a TIP transistor looks like a big Hagen transistor, but the BBE is 1.4 volts. The current gain is now 1,000. The one caveat, though, is I cannot get this down to 0.2 volts. The reason is between collector and emitter, I've got a diode. That's 0.7 volts. I've got a second transistor. That can be at best 0.2 volts when it saturates. So the net result is for Darlington pair, I can't get VCE less than 0.9 volts. So that's the saturation voltage. Otherwise, treat it just like a regular transistor. For example, uh, suppose I want to drive an 8 ohm speaker. The TIP transistor's got enough current capability, you can do that. Make this your pick processor, function generator, cell phone, you know, whatever you like. This will output 0 volts or 5 volts, add up to about 25 milliamps. An 8 ohm speaker at 5 volts draws 625 milliamps. That's too much for a microprocessor to drive directly. So use a transistor as a switch. Again, what I do is connect 5 volts to the speaker to ground, then the speaker pops up. Break the path to ground with the transistor, and I can now turn this on and off by turning on and off the transistor. Pick RIB so that the base current saturates it, so beta IB is more than IC. If IC is 512 milliamps, this has to be at least 512 microamps. Pick something bigger than 512 microamps, say 1 milliamp. If that's 1 milliamp, then RB needs to be 3.6K. Basically, 5 volts minus 1.4 volts over RB is 1 milliamp. RB is 3.6 kilo ohms. If I simulate that in Circuit Lab, uh, 0 volts in gives you 0 volts out, no current. That's easy. 5 volts in, if I look at VC, VC is 0.9 volts out, 904 millivolts. Again, it's not 0.2 volts because you get 0.7 volts across this diode plus another 0.2. Gives you 0.9 volts at VC. And the current is about as I calculated 511.9 milliamps versus 512. Um, caveat if you do this in lab, use the TIP transistors if you're using a speaker or a motor. Uh, the smaller ones, like uh, transistors or LEDs, I could use the 3904 transistors. One caveat if you're using a motor, you need to use a flyback diode. The reason being is if I have the transistor turning on and off, the transistor is going to get fried. What happens is the motor stores energy in its magnetic field. The energy is 1F Li squared. If I turn off the transistor, the magnetic field collapses and it has to go somewhere. The path to ground is through the transistor and it will fry the transistor. Another way to think of that is voltage via LDIDT. So if the current goes from something to zero. The voltage is the derivative of a step, becomes infinity. This will be infinite voltage. Basically, the current will find a path to ground. And if the path to ground is through your transistor, it fries the transistor. What a flyback diode does is it provides a path for the current, an alternative path to the transistor. Another way to think of it is it clips the voltage right here. This can never go above 12.7 volts. If it does, the diode turns on and it clips it, saving the transistor. That's a flyback diode. That's kind of what was on this circuit. These are the transistors that we looked at before. Here's the base in the middle. This is the emitter. There's the collector. I've got a Zener diode, 12 volt Zener going emitter to ground. If the collector ever goes above 12 volts, the Zener turns on and saves the transistor rather than having the current through the motor going through the transistor. If you take out that flyback diode, the transistor will work for a couple minutes and then die. Then you need a new transistor. Put a new one in, it quickly dies. The flyback diode saves the transistor. So that's using transistors as a switch. Uh, they're fairly easy to use. It's really a buffer. Take something wimpy like a cell phone, microprocessor, function generator. With that, I can turn a device on or off uh, fairly easily, uh, be it a motor, fan, light, LED, um, speaker. If you have a speaker, I can now have you know, one amp went through the speaker, have loud, annoying sounds to annoy your friends and neighbors. That's lecture number 12 for ECE 320 Electronics.